So welcome to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And as a guest today, we have back here, Dr. Jeffrey Rutterbush. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thanks for having me back once again, Steve. It's great to be back. So let's talk about melatonin because we have had several guests here on this very channel talking about melatonin and we have had several opinions, of course. So tell us, what can we use it for? Because some say it's only for sleep, but you shouldn't use it too long because one gets adapted. Others like Dr. Eric Serrano say we can use it for its uh, immunity properties and others use it for its anti-cancer properties. So what is your take on it? What can we use it for? And are there different doses for the different purposes? This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you wanna learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Being a dermatologist, I recommend Mizumi skincare products for all acne prone skin. Link in the description of this video. Yes, um, let me go first off, start with a little historical background. Um, melatonin has been around, first discovered in 1958. That was a long time ago. And but 30 years uh, went by before somebody decided to do some experimentation with it. So 1988, the Swiss uh, did a study and they found out that it extends the, the life's the lifespan or longevity, you might speak, of, uh, uh, of mice and Drosophila melanogaster. You know, mice are little rodents and Drosophila melanogaster, we all know from our genetics in college, are the little fruit flies. So it increased the lifespan of, of mice by about 25%. And fruit flies by about 33%. So like I say, that was 1988. I, I do remember the 80s very well. And I do remember when that study came out. I don't remember what journal it was in, but that's what interests me first and foremost in the, long, the longevity aspect of, of melatonin. Um, to give you some insight into this famous study of 1988, uh, they took mice who were healthy. And they were about 19 months old, both the control and the uh, experimental group. And they gave it them, the, the, obviously the, the experimental group, the melatonin and the control group didn't. And the mice who were given the melatonin uh, lived 25% longer than those that did it. And the fruit, fruit flies lived 33% longer. So, you know, that's significant if you're a, a mouse or a fruit fly. But then again, some of those experiments can translate over to, uh, to human studies. So the most respectable PhD in the science of melatonin research is uh, Dr. Russell Reiter, or Reiter, R-E-I-T-E-R, -E uh, University of Texas at San Antonio. And he's, he wrote a book published in the mid 90s, I believe it came out in 95. So it's getting somewhat dated, but I have it, it's still a good read. And it's full of great information on the longevity and the aspects of melatonin. It's highly regarded as an antioxidant, a tremendous antioxidant. Matter of fact, some research indicate it is the most powerful antioxidant known to mankind. So it's a powerful antioxidant. It extends longevity. Some people have used it to lower cholesterol, increase DHEA, increases IGF-1, which is an indirect measure of growth hormone, as you know, Stephen. Um, so I got into it more specifically due to my you know, frequent attendance at the A4M and the AMMG uh, conferences. And I was interested because I heard it's so powerful as an anti-cancer therapeutic hormone. And one of the pre presenters had an interesting study because he said, you know, if it improves lifespan in these, you know, the mice and, and the fruit flies, 
And so let's do a little, little study here in, in humans. So they looked at, believe it or not, um, they looked at blind, blind people, they're called the blind study. You know, think about it. If you're blind, there's no real natural light getting into your eyes. So naturally, you have more endogenous production around the clock of melatonin. And so they started looking at you know, retrospective cancer studies and people who are blind. And lo and behold, almost a 50% reduction, only 49%, we'll just say 50%, about 50% reduction in cancers. All cancer. More significantly, breast cancer. The women who were blind had a significantly lower incidences of breast cancer, particularly. Men had a significantly lowered risk of prostate cancer. Now, I remember all cancers, but we're looking at breast mainly for, for women and, and prostate for men. So now we know it, it has an uh, anti carcinogenic effect. The, the, the issue is what else? Therein lies the rub. So most people start out, I start my patients on one to three milligrams, is all. Just start them slow. And you know what? If they can't tolerate it, and how, how do you assess tolerance? Well, you either wake up, you don't, you either don't get a good night's sleep, or you wake up and you're groggy for a few hours. So you gotta make an adjustment. So I can go down in the dose, I can go up in the dose. Many times you have to go up in the dose. Most people do real well between five and 10 milligrams of melatonin at night. The issue, however, is when you start getting heavier doses, the bigger doses, you start running the people that can't tolerate it or they have too much of a hangover effect. And therein lies the rub because most of the studies on cancer indicate that you gotta be above 20 milligrams to reap the benefits of the anti-cancer effects. So a lot of people can't tolerate those doses, get the anti-cancer effects, but I still find that the majority of patients I see, if you start them low and go slow and bring it up slowly, they can go beyond 20 milligrams to reap the benefits, and in particular, the anti-cancer benefits of the melatonin. So again, very powerful anti-cancer properties, a very, very powerful antioxidant, probably the most free, powerful free radical scavenger that our bodies produce. No wonder it's produced so, you know, so much in the evening time as our minds are at rest, supposedly, and then it's working as anti-scavenging capabilities at night, gobbling up the free radicals, so to speak, in your brain, because your brain does not have a lymphatic system. So the only, only way it can really detoxify itself is during REM sleep at night when melatonin gets greatly secreted and it cleans up the debris floating around the brain. So it keeps the brain young and healthy. Therefore, staving off neurocognitive decline diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, other age-related dementias. All right. So um, great hormone, been around for a long time. The is only issue is finding that, that balance of dosage that you optimize benefits and minimize the downside, which is mainly intolerance due to grogginess in the morning. Believe it or not, there are some people that it, it makes them excited, it gives high anxiety. So they're very difficult to deal with, but usually I, I can work through those patients by finding out what's, what's mi micronutrients they're void of, repleting micronutrients, and then enhancing their abilities to tolerate higher doses. And uh, what about adaptation? Uh, does it have yeah. to be cycled? I agree with Dr. Eric Serrano there uh, because Dr. Russell Reiter, Reiter agrees with, you know, he's one wrote the book in the mid nineties. He's the world's most reputable source of knowledge. And he feels, no, you don't have to uh, 
cycle it at all. Um, but then again, during my research, just to present this bone up on my, on my notes, there are some people that still think it there's a down regulation and that you should take some time off at least one or two days a week uh, from the melatonin. But my clinical experience is, is that I nor my patients have to cycle off it and can remain on it indefinitely. Now, contraindications, I don't prescribe it for children. And there's indications that you need to stay away from it, away from it in pregnant women. Mm. I just, I don't, I don't advocate it in pregnant women, nor children. Mm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And now give this video a thumbs up and go watch one of these videos to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization. <laughs>